Yeah, here we are pulling into Prince Rupert. Yeah, I assume this is our dock right here. It's where they're pulling into, and then there's guys on either end right here, so I assume they're going to handle the lines. BC with the territory stretching 180 miles south to Clem 2, another 80 miles north to Metlakatla, Alaska, and 200 miles inland. Today we're beginning our tour here at Atlan Terminal. Alright, so Prince Rupert was first built with the idea that it would become a huge port city that would anchor the transcontinental Grand Trunk Pacific Railway. This was the vision of the Grand Trunk Pacific President, Charles Hayes, who actually unfortunately passed away during the sinking of the Titanic. So when that plan didn't quite work out, it became a very famous fishing port known for many years as the halibut capital of the world. But then Prince Rupert's very strategic location became very obvious as World War approached in the late 1930s and it began to explode in size. From a fishing town of 6,500 to a garrison town of 25,000 American and Canadian troops. When the troops filed out after the war, a pulp mill was built using wartime facilities, and as a fishing and logging hub, Prince Rupert thrived throughout the late 20th century. And then, just as resource industries declined and it seemed that as the end had finally come, a container terminal that offered an alternative to crowded southern ports helped reinvent Prince Rupert once again into the major port first envisioned uh, when the railway was planned more than a hundred years ago. We hope you enjoy this step into the past brought our historic trolley cars as we take you through the past and into our present on our very unique coastal getaway. Here to your left we got our lovely Safeway. Hey. Yeah, this is actually the first place Morgan and I were employed. Morgan was hired a lot earlier than me though. She Oh, Morgan and I are sisters. We explained that, I think. I think no. we did. Oh, no. We noticed. We noticed. Murray Road. Does anyone know who Bill Murray is? Yes. Unfortunately, it's not the one you're thinking of, the famous <laughs> Ghostbuster, but that'd be pretty cool. Bill Murray was a very popular um, politician here in BC, and he actually opened up the Crest Hotel, which is just over there. So Bill Murray is going to take us straight to Quinnitza Station. The Sinchian people have inhabited this very region for thousands of years. Recently, through DNA and radiocarbon dating, lineages of descendants living here today have been confirmed to trace back at least 5,000 years ago. Uh, the story of the city of Prince Rupert began in 1903 when the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway decided to build a transcontinental railway here to Cane Island, in the heart of the traditional territory of the Simshian. The name Cane Island, or Lahaine, means to the Simshian of foam. That's because we experienced some of the world's largest tides, which is about 24 feet, or a four foot change in the water level every hour. The city of Prince Rupert was incorporated on March 3rd, 1910. By then a large dock stood at this spot, bustling with regular coastal passenger steamers. Which is right in front of us there with the large glass window is actually locally owned and is now the Wheelhouse Brewing Company. Morgan actually works there. If you stop by, say hello to her and her friends. I'm sure they'd love that. But looking to your left, you're going to see a red house. We'll be sure to slow down right in front of it for you guys. This house is known as the Pillsbury House. With its distinctive four gable roof points, it points to all points of the compass and was built in 1907 and was the first real house in what was then a tent city. It's now built it was built and occupied by Grand Trunk Pacific Railway dignitaries and their families, just as Red House to the left side. It is now operated as a local bed and breakfast. We'll be turning onto Second Avenue. The Grand Trunk, the Grand Trunk Pacific planned for Second Avenue to be the main street of the new town. But when land was auctioned, prices for lots just one block over on 3rd, which is just across the street there. The lots were far less expensive over there, so 3rd became the main street of business. Back about our mall, we have the world's second smallest Walmart ever. 
We call it our lovely little small mart. We have our mall just here on the right side. This is also the only Walmart to not own its facility. It actually rents the, part, the department that it's in right now. <coughs> the shopping mall was once the site of CN Park, which was a centerpiece of the community where many totem poles from the surrounding area were once collected. Highliner is not to the old fishing days. Fishermen are paid by weight, so it was very easy to begin comparing who caught the most fish for the day. The one who weighed in the highest was given the very prestigious name, the Highliner. And on the side of the Moby Dick Inn, we have a gorgeous mural done by a very famous artist in BC named Jeff Kang. Has anyone heard of a monkey tail tree before? So these trees aren't actually native to Canada, they're native to the Andes Mountains, but we actually have three of these trees here in Prince Rupert. They typically wouldn't survive in this type of climate, but because we live in the middle of a rainforest, they've been thriving very well. Here on Gordon Street, we have what we like to call the mother of all of our monkey trees, um, just because this one is the biggest, and the seeds from this tree up the head, uh, they're actually the seeds that were used to plant the other two trees that we have. So the property that this tree is on, uh, the housing property, there's actually a bylaw that states anyone who owns this house and this yard legally cannot cut down this tree. Just this large tree here to your right side. The mountain view from Summit Avenue offers a reminder of the disastrous Mount Oldfield slide in 1957. Six people were killed when the landslide had struck, but Prince Rupert's miracle baby was an 18 month old baby girl who was dead alive from the rubble. She was raised by relatives in Manitoba and actually lived to earlier last year. If we slow down just a little bit here, that's the quick glimpse of our second monkey tree. It's not the biggest, it's definitely a lot smaller, but still growing. And across from our hospital, we have a lookout point with two totem poles, the grizzly bear pole of Skidans and the eagle and beaver pole of Nixtons, both hide poles recarved by Chief William Jeffrey. But to your right, we have our entrance to our hospital, and beside our hospital, we have our local ambulance station. That's actually where I work, and I'm a student paramedic right now, so I've been doing student shifts here and there when I have the time. Yes, that's Annunciation. That is our Catholic private school. Behind Sunrise Grocery on Comox Avenue, which is just the street to the right, was once known as the Red Light District from Prince Edward's earliest days. Together with gambling dens and bootleggers going over the hill to Comox Avenue was not something discussed in respectful society. Service Park commemorates two police officers lost in the line of duty. In July 1938, an agitated cab driver who had been issued a traffic summons burst into the local courthouse and shot Inspector William Service and Sergeant Robert Gibson. The cabbie died in a gunfight with constables later that day at the local beer parlor. So this area, Service Park, was once the site of Prince Rupert's very first city hall. It was built here in 1911 and used until 1964. If you look to your left, you will see the city hall of today, originally a federal government building which served as military headquarters during the war. Some interesting facts about that, Charles Hayes was the first person to be recovered by the recovery team after the sinking. The gloves that he was wearing during the sinking are actually on display in the museum in Halifax. Um, and apparently he had a very large wad of cash in his pocket that was never actually recovered when they found him. On your right side you will see a yellow building. That is our RCMP building or also the Royal Canadian Mounting Police Department. Just this yellow building here. And across from the RCMP, we have our very local and very colorful library. Done by Jeff King here on the Civic Center. Um, he really made sure to pay attention to the detail with these sea otters. Um, if you didn't know, sea otters really like to munch on sea urchin. 
so if you look at one of these sea otters, they actually have scratches on their nose because they tend to get little cuts there when they're trying to crack open the sea urchins. Black bears and even wolves and mountain lions. There are so many deer that the common joke is that they've actually learned how to use a crosswalk. It's actually not a joke though, they genuinely do know how. The deer here are very friendly. Uh, we actually had a very famous deer, I want to say about five years ago. Uh, we called him Hammy. He was hanging out in somebody's yard and unfortunately got a purple hammock stuck in his antlers. So he was walking around for weeks with this thing. Um, everyone here loved him though. People had shirts with this deer on it. And he actually made the national news. So, very famous. Something unique about the Great Bear Rainforest is that it's home to the spirit bear. Has anyone heard of a spirit bear before or seen one? Okay, so the spirit bear is a white variation of the black bear. And the quantity that we have here are not found anywhere else in the world. So the rain here, uh, the rain is maybe difficult for some visitors, but it's one of the elements that makes this place so unique. We receive about nine feet of rain every year, and we're also known as the rainiest city in Canada. Rain is critical for salmon, as it provides enough water for salmon to spawn in our rivers. Prince Rupert, you might notice that a lot of the houses definitely had a similar look. Um, with the wartime boom, there was a great need for housing, and a total of 552 prefabricated houses were quickly thrown up in the 1940s. We like to call these wartime houses. A typical wartime house would have no basement, no yard, and no porch. Tier across the street on the left and on the right. Those provide two great examples. We are gonna be heading toward my manager loves to see me drive by with all my lovely tourists, so we just give her a friendly little wave and say hello. That's Gianna, Zoe, and Julian working. Best friends. After the Second World War, the air base became the community's first aerodrome, a seaplane base that provided regular passenger service that continues today in supplying outlying communities. Civil War, which was from 1642 to 1651, and he became the first governor of the Hudson Bay Company in 1670. He was the inventor of the cavalry charge and led the first cavalry charge, which was successful to break the enemy's lines. He was also known to do his own reconnaissance, where one time he dressed up as an apple peddler and wandered over enemy's lines to gather vital information to help win the battle. And as we turn left here, you'll get a gorgeous view of our harbor. So at this harbor, a lot of seals are found here as well as eagles. We also have a little family of cats here, which is really cute, stray cats. But this is where I got to see the eel and the seals and watch the family feed them. It's very common for families to do that here in Prince Rupert just because the seals are so familiar with us now. Yeah, there's two. There's two. Looks like a little baby. Anyway, is anyone familiar with the polar bear swim or the polar plunge? Yeah. 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 So this is where we hold our polar plunge. Um, you can walk in on the boat launch, walk our walk to land. So the first dairy cattle brought into the community in 1906 had to swim ashore up to Cow Bay, and the name actually stuck. On our right side, you'll see a nursery of trees. The wheelhouse owns this area, and those trees are uh, pine trees, or sorry, spruce trees. Uh, they'll pick the spruce tips, and they'll actually boil it into a very popular beer called the Scurvy Dog. Cow Bay was originally home to the mosquito fleet of small boats, the fishing vessels, the tugs, and ferries, and other working vessels that were lifeblood to the local commerce. This working heritage is still visible even though Cow Bay is now home to a wide range of trendy shops and services. 
On the right, we've got the whale tail mural. Um, this is actually the first mural we got by Jeff King. And then this red building is Dolly's Fish Market, some more selection of seafood, another Jeff King mural on Rona of some orcas. And then we've got the Saltwater Bakery here on the left. Excellent desserts there. Yes. And then we've got one more Jeff King mural here on the left of some grizzly bears and a raven. I always say this is about as close as you'd want to get to a grizzly bear. As we turn here, if you look to your right, you will see the very first steamroller that was used to pave the roads here in Prince Rupert. And if you haven't noticed already, we definitely need to take it out of retirement and fix some of the potholes that we have. To your left, in just a moment, we have a traditional log house made out of cedar. The museum owns this longhouse here, and sometimes they'll take tourists over here to do traditional dances, traditional indigenous dances. Beside the longhouse, we have another cedar building, and this is where local artists will gather and work on totem poles together. If you guys look to your left, you will get a view of Pacific Mariners Memorial Park. This park was developed to dedicate those who were lost at sea. Uh, one of the most touching stories told here is about the fishing vessel Kazu Maru. So a gentleman in Owasi, Japan decided to venture out into the sea and with this boat here that we have on display, he unfortunately was lost at sea and passed away due to his sinking. Uh, but two years later, his boat was just uh, recovered and it was brought here in Prince Rupert for identification. Once we recognized that it came from our sister uh, city, Owasi, Japan, we decided to put it on display in honor of him. And here we are pulling back into San Francisco. He's going to maneuver in somewhere or another. If you like what you see, Please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for future videos.